In the summer of 1993, the Mississippi, one of the most heavily engineered rivers in the world, burst its control banks in one of the most devastating floods to hit the USA. This event brought to a head a question that has been smoldering for a very long time. Can big rivers like the Mississippi ever be completely tamed, or will nature always somehow take its course? The Mississippi is over 3,000 kilometers long, draining half of the United States. It's the major river artery of America. 300 years ago, before Europeans arrived, the landscape in the valley was a wetland measuring 100 kilometers from east to west, across which the river wandered at random. During periods of really heavy rain, the river burst its banks, turning the floodplain into a lake. When the rain stopped, the river would often return to a completely different route from the one it had taken before. This was a nightmare for shipping. The average paddle steamer only lasted 18 months before crashing. Without a reliable shipping channel, the transport of farm and factory products was chaotic. The valley's economy in dire straits. Something had to be done. It was the army engineers who took on the huge task. Their first move was to build what are known as wing dikes out into the river. Built from tough stone, they trapped large amounts of the river's sediment, forming new land, which narrowed the channel down. What happened is what the engineers had predicted. Forced into a narrower width, the river flowed faster and eroded a deeper channel a much better bet for shipping. But this didn't solve the flooding problem. Every spring, as the winter snows melted, the river did what it had always done. If agriculture, cities and industries were to grow successfully next to the river, another idea was needed. This time, what the engineers did was literally wall the river in. These walls, known as levees, were built along the whole length of the river, eventually offering better protection to riverside developments. But as the population grew, the engineers came under huge pressure to make sure that flooding would never, ever again be a threat to people and property. At that point, they really went for it. First, control dams were built to hold back flood water and reduce pressure on the levees. Second, they changed the map of the valley. Shortcuts were blasted through the numerous meanders. Water was speeded more smoothly downstream. The natural course of the river dried up. By the time they'd finished, the Mississippi was 250 kilometers shorter. Third, and finally, the river banks were stabilized with mattresses of concrete slabs. It's taken 100 years and 7 billion pounds to change the whole look of the Mississippi River landscape. Then, in the late spring of 1993, the weather over the Mississippi Basin went mad. The border between the warm air from the Gulf of Mexico and cold air from the Arctic got stuck 2,000 kilometers farther south than normal. Along this crucial junction, it rained for weeks on end. The result was a massive increase in the volume of water in the river. 
water that in the river's natural state would have spread sideways was hemmed in, trapped between the levees, leading to a frightening build-up in pressure. The river didn't like it. In the end, the levees gave up under the sheer weight of water. Having more or less protected the riverside areas from the Mississippi's average behaviour, the engineering could not ultimately cope with nature at its most extreme. The lesson from 1993 is that the Mississippi will probably do the same thing again. The threat of flooding will not go away. But how could anybody ever say, you can't build here? Around two million years ago, an ice age began in the Southern Hemisphere simultaneously in South America, Southern Africa, Australia, and here in New Zealand. The same thing was happening in the Northern Hemisphere in North America, Europe, and Asia. Indeed, in both hemispheres, the phases of the Ice Age were very similar. And so were the changes the ice brought to the look of the landscape. Like many other spots on Earth, the Ice Age, in a way, still carries on here. These are the peaks at the head of New Zealand's Franz Josef Glacier. They're 3,000 metres high, and temperatures are below zero all year round. The mountains are battered by blizzards surging in from the ocean. At this height, year after year, a huge supply of snow piles up on top of the glacier. As it thickens, this fresh snow is compressed under its own weight into ice, ice that will eventually become part of the glacier that's underneath. It's the snow on top that feeds the ice beneath the surface. It's in winter that the, if you like, fuel tanks of the glacier really begin to build up. It's the 4th of June and there have been three major snowfalls already. Let's see how much. 